He just doesn't even know. He doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm quite a few ways from that senioritis. Isn't it funny that it's kind of the same thing as what they say in high school? You know, seniors, their last year before they graduated, senioritis. And then when you're about 65, you have senioritis again because you're a senior. So not only are you ready to retire, but you're also a senior, literally. So anyway, I don't know. I'm a weird thinker. All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Turning your Bibles to Matthew 24, I'm just going to read the first few verses in Matthew 24. Matthew 24. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 24, before I begin, is... The disciples are asking Jesus about the end times and things that are going to take place, how they can know the signs of the times. And it's like I just was talking to Brother Wayne while we were getting a cup of coffee. And, you know, so many people, they, they do. And I'm talking to my uncle this morning in text message. You know, they, people want to have some positivity with all the inflation, all the war, pestilence, everything that's going on. And, and they say, you know, boy, sometimes it'd be good to hear something positive from the Bible. And like I told Brother Wayne, you want to know what's positive? And you want to hear something positive? The Word of God's come into life. We're seeing it happen before our very eyes. And that should encourage you and give you an opportunity to witness to other people, to show them that God, that the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they had this thing figured out from the very beginning. And that now it's starting to come uh, to fruition. Um, I talked about the days of Noah. We may talk a little bit about that as well. I don't know how this study is going to lead. Um, but, you know, obviously if anyone has a question at any time or something they want to apply to the lesson, feel free to raise your hand. That's not interrupting if you raise your hand. Jumping out and saying something is. But, you know, I had a guy say, well, I didn't want to interrupt you. And I'm like, just raise your hand. You know, and, and if there's a question, then we can dive deeper into it. Or if, or if you say, you know, maybe this is, maybe I don't agree with what exactly how you're saying it, then let's cross-reference some other scriptures to see if what's being taught is true. And that's why I did the lesson on interpretations belonging to God. So I believe as long as we stay true to the Word of God and we stay in the context and we don't break the English language and we do a lot of common sense things, things, we can understand what the Bible wants us to know. It's not a difficult book um, to understand. Men make it difficult. People make it difficult. They've enlarged this book so much that they have to teach you. And there's a problem with that because the simple message of the gospel from the very beginning is you can't work your way to heaven, Cain. You have to be like your brother Abel and just accept the sacrifice for what it is. Accept me, believe me, I'm the way, you have to place all your faith that what I did, and people don't understand believing, they don't understand the word believe. When you believe, when it says uh, that you need to believe on Jesus Christ, it's saying you need to acknowledge what he's done and that you have no part in it but believing. You are acknowledging that his sacrifice was good enough to take care of everything, and there's nothing you can do. You add to that, you're adding your works. You add to that, you better be careful. Because when you accept Jesus Christ and you believe, and you place all your faith in him, that means you get your hands off everything. And that's hard to do. Because man has this, we want to be hands-on, right? I mean, it's the same thing. It's like you watch a football game. You're going to tell the coach all the mistakes he made because you're better than the coach, right? It's like you're going to sit here and tell the government all the mistakes they're making because you're qualified to be there too, right? I mean, it's all, well, yeah, anybody's qualified. I mean, I could go down to the Alzheimer's Center and get a better president. I mean, that's beside the point, but, you know, it's, it's just that's how it is. 
It, that's how it is. We all want to have our part. We're all backseat drivers. We're all armchair quarterbacks, right? Truthfully, we all have our opinions. So we need to be able to say, what does the Bible say? And then go right there for what the truth is. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. <clears throat> There's a few things I'm going to start this morning. Um, verse number four, because the disciples are asking, Lord, how are we going to know the end times? How are we going to know when and what we should look for? And then Jesus in verse number four says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. <clears throat> and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that it would be your words this morning that it would be your Holy Spirit, that we can understand the word of God together. Lord, that it can strengthen us and that it can purify us, Lord, is your word. Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I'm going to use Brother Wayne as an example again. We were just talking, and I guess this is why I'm, I feel like I'm going in this direction this morning as well. It goes along with an article I am going to read. Um, but... When we look at everything that Jesus is telling us here about the signs of the times, don't you look at that and see that most of those are being fulfilled worldwide today? Now, see, here's the thing. We can always look through history. We can always look back and say, well, back in the day, everybody thought Napoleon was the Antichrist. Or they can look back in the day and say they thought Adolf Hitler was the Antichrist. The problem with all those theories is this. There were a lot of things that weren't in place. There were a lot of things that weren't in place. Number one, there was no third temple. Israel wasn't even a nation yet again, right? And then you look at all these different things, and you can even look at the wording. And I'm reviewing a little bit from Wednesday night. The word antichrist doesn't mean that he's some goblin with all kinds of blood, and he's going to tell everybody to go commit all this wicked lewdness. He's not some guy that's just sitting over there waiting to be this blood-sucking vampire weird thing. No, antichrist means in the place or another Christ. And Jesus is saying here in verse number four, he's saying, beware, because there's going to be a lot of Christs. There's going to be a lot of people professing to have hope. But see, here's the thing. We don't trust in the world's hope. We shouldn't, right? This is a hopeless planet. I mean, I heard on the news the other day when I was, I, I listened to Cross Talk, and I'd recommend that every Christian should at least hear their weekly news roundup. There was questioning and stuff going on in all these hearings. I, I forget what they're, all the hearings are for. There's so many hearings going on. You know, they, hey, they spend our money like it's just me. It just is like you just turn on the water faucet and out comes our money and they do nothing. Whole world's falling apart and they're in there holding hearings and all this nonsense. Kind of drives me crazy. Why don't you get out there and do something? Get your hands dirty. Get out there and go back to where you're from and start getting busy in your community, actually helping people instead of sitting around in Washington, D.C. doing nothing. That's what they're doing. Nothing. And we're just going, oh, okay, here we go. More money. More money. Right? And then I actually had, I actually heard a lady when she was questioned on whether or not, who heard this, that men can get pregnant? Ridiculous. Are you kidding me? Ridiculous. Take heed that no man deceive you. That person is steeped in deception. Deception. And they're putting Kotex in boys' bathrooms in schools now. Ridiculous. Right? I mean, does that make sense to you? No. I mean, 
I, look, there's other ways to spend that money. There are people starving to death. The world's falling apart, and yet everybody's wasting their time doing nothing. You know why? Because the world's leader, leaderless right now. The entire world. It is setting itself up for the rise of the Antichrist. And we as Christians, we're like, well, we just need to get the right guy in here or the right person or do the No, 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 no. The right one to get in anywhere is Jesus Christ. Take heed that no one deceive you. Let God be true and every man found a liar. Well, if this guy gets in, he'll help the economy. Hey, Jesus doesn't care about your economy. He cares about your heart. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, right? Hey, listen, you want some encouragement? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, he's going to come back and take you to your new home. Right? Guess what? You want some encouragement? There it is. This earth is not my home. I'm passing through. You know, other than family, there's not a lot here I really care about. There really, who cares? Right? Who cares? If God wills, we'll do it. If he doesn't, we won't. Because my faith is in him. Take heed that no man deceives you. Now, as I was reading on, Verse number six, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. It's funny because a lot of these things in, Ma in Matthew 24, verse six and seven, these things are happening today, right? And I know there's people that'll say, oh, well, these things have always taken place. But have they taken place on the worldwide scale like today? The answer is no, no. I mean, how many of you know that California has been in the worst drought and that drought has gone on for 22 years? 22 years! The worst drought in over 1,200 years. Do you realize that the worst drought in over 1,200 years has lasted for two decades? Two decades. Nah. California, keep doing what you're doing. You're great at it. And here's the thing. They, are, are they like saying, you know, maybe we need to turn to God? Maybe God has, no, it's leaf blowers, cow flatulence, and cars and trucks, while they got all these tankers sitting off the coast of California, burning through 32,000 gallons of diesel fuel. As it sits there, it's your fault. You're breathing. Put a mask on. Speaking of masks, how many of you know that that's actually illegal for us to be under many of these mandates that we've been under? I didn't even realize this to the other day, so I'm looking at it because of the Emergency Powers Act. Congress was bypassed on the lockdowns, the vaccines, the mask mandates. All this stuff is actually illegal for them to do, but who cares? We're just giving in because we've been deceived. Who cares? We're, we're, we're deceived, totally deceived. Just give away our Constitution, everything that gave us our freedom to practice and preach and teach the Word of God. And we just gave it away overnight like it didn't even exist. We didn't fight, not one real fight. Christianity just went, oh, yeah, I guess we're just going to sit down there and be peaceful because that's what I was taught sitting in my weak need, listening to my weak pastor who's wearing pointy shoes, skinny jeans, and a tank top and has long hair, and that's your pastor. And that's what many of them are, they're sitting under that kind of leadership where he's sitting up here on a bar stool playing a guitar, looking like he should be in a nightclub. And I'll tell you this right now, he probably shaves his arms. Right? Come on. Show me in the Bible where any man of God ever didn't look like a man. Elijah the Tishbite. When Ahab went and said, how do you know it was a, hey, hey, you talked to this guy, he said he was Elijah, and, and what, did, what did Obadiah say? He said, yeah, yeah. And he said, Ahab says, was he a hairy man? He's like, yep. He's like, that's Elijah. Hairy man. How about John the Baptist? Anybody didn't know who he was, right? eating locusts, wild honey, probably had it in his hair, his beard, looked like a maniac. That's what the man of God should look like, a maniac. Getting ready to preach the word of God to you, doesn't care what you think. Doesn't really care how you feel, I hate to say it, because what God said is the truth, and you need to hear it so that you straighten up and clean up your act and fly right. America's been flying in the gutter for too long. The world's been flying in the gutter for too long. 
But no, all these Christians around America said, I don't want to go to a church that preaches out of the King James because I don't understand thee, thou. No, what you don't want to hear is that your King James Bible is going to call hell, hell. What you don't want to hear is that this book is inspired by God and it's a hard saying throughout this book. That's what you don't want to hear. You want to go in and hear, Jesus loves me, this I know, right? That's what you want to hear, a bunch of Christian nursery rhymes. And that's the problem today. Christianity, you want to know why we're in the position we're in? It's because Christianity decided to walk away from the truth and be turned unto fables and things that don't profit. And they just get caught up into listening to nonsense. And then they quit placing their faith in God, and they start placing it in men and women. And the truth is, throughout the entire Bible, if you put your trust in God, he takes care of it. You put your trust in men, they fail. King Saul, King David, King Solomon. I mean, why do you think First and Second Kings, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Chronicles is even written? So that you can see man doesn't have the answers. Why do you think Revelation chapter 20 is so short when it talks about the millennial reign of Christ? Because Jesus does it right every time, all the time, and he only needs to tell you that's how it's going to be. Ruling with a rod of iron. But yet you got like six whole entire books devoted to men's mistakes. And then you got Jesus in like two paragraphs of chapter 20, and of course he's the king of kings and lord of lords, and he doesn't make a mistake. Put your faith in him, right? But yet that's not what we do. And we just let the government take control of our nation. And then now this week, the World Health Organization is going to vote on whether or not they can do what's uh, some type of uh, jurisdiction that they can have over all nations of the world. And everybody goes, America's going to lose its freedom. This is what I wish people would really think about. Who funds the United Nations? United States. First, the United Nations was actually the League of Nations, which the United States put into power anyway after World War II. And then you have the United Nations, and we fund them. Do you, has anybody thought that maybe there's some nefarious folks in the government of the United States right now? And they, you know what people like to do? They like to play the blame game, right? All the way back to the Garden of Eden. Uh, Adam, where are you? Um, I'm naked and I'm hiding from you, Lord, right? I'm naked and I'm hiding. Why are you naked? Who told you? Uh, What's the first thing he did? Uh, My wife made me do it. And then the wife goes, the serpent made me do it. Look, the devil didn't make you do it. You wanted to do it, right? Adam, Adam chose to do that. Eve chose to listen to the lie. And take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. And you know what? The nefarious groups that are in our government want to blame the World Health Organization. They want to blame the other side for their actions. When we fund it all, well, actually, we, when I say we, literally, we are the ones funding it. They gave you back your money and called it a stimulus check. They gave it back to you. Here you go. Well, hello. And most smart people who understand mathematics know that if you give money away, uh, Somewhere, somehow, someday, someone's going to pay for that. So they gave you back, well, I don't even know the amount. I didn't even get three, of, uh, two of them. I got one of them, and the rest of the government said, oh, yay, you're going to pay taxes. Okay, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so they give it to you, and then they say, you know what, this is to help you out. Because you've got to stay home. Because we did an illegal occupation, so now we're going to pay you out of your money to keep you at home. But it's never really enough to keep you going. It's just enough to keep you afloat in some cases, right? So all this deception, I mean, we've been under this Emergency Powers Act the whole entire time. And nobody's, I'm surprised they didn't just suspend the elections, the last ones. This is how you know everything's a sham and you've been sold a bill of goods. Because under the Emergency Powers Act, you can suspend elections. You can do all these things, but you've been lied to. And you're going to continue to be lied to until the Lord does return. And this is what the Bible is saying. Take heed that no one deceives you. But we've been deceived at every point. So I'm, I'm obviously, I'm the kind of guy who says, you know what? I'm going to live like it's the end of the world today. 
But I'm also going to prepare like it's going to go on till I can live to be 80, 90, or 100 years old, if God permits. So I plan for my retirement, right? I have to because I do my own business. So I have to do my own investments. Otherwise, I won't have a retirement because Social Security won't be here. Or it won't be like how we know it today. Or the 1,000, 1,200, 1,600, 2,000, whatever you get isn't going to be enough. It might make, it, it, by that time, you might be able to pay your water bill and your electric bill with it. Right? I mean, at the rate things are going. But I'm, I'm reading my investments. And I'm just, I just took a, uh, I was sent this. And so, therefore, I took and hid it in my pictures. I just want to read this to you quickly. But soaring costs aren't only a problem in the wealthier parts of the world. Annual global inflation is set to reach 6.7% this year. That's annual global inflation. First time in history the entire world is falling into this. Not to mention, look at the amount of people there are in the world, right? According to the United Nations, with developing countries in Western Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean also feeling the pinch. Even in the poorest countries, prices are climbing in some regions of war-torn Yemen. Basic foods were 85% more expensive in March than a year before. 85%. Now, I never knew this existed, and I had my cousin looking into it last night. A year before, according to the Famine Early Warning Systems Network. Now, who's heard of that? And that's actually a thing because I had him Google it and look into it, and he's going to do more research on it for me. But it's the Famine Early Warning Systems Network. Who knew that existed? Yeah, because all the important information you're not going to know, but you're going to know all about the Queen of England. Right? You're going to know all about Chris Rock getting slapped by another fool. Forgot his name, Will Smith. See how much I don't care? But that's going to be everywhere. But this news isn't, right? Which monitors global food insecurity. In some countries, distinct factors are in play, such as Brexit and tax hikes in Britain. Now, this is the, art, this is the part I want you to pay attention to. And the world accidentally quotes the Bible. They accidentally do it. They don't even realize they're, they're doing it. But get this, but a range of issues that, across, that can cut across borders is disrupting the modern global economic system and driving inflation around the world. Get this, among them, the mammoth scale problems of disease, war, and weather. Didn't I just read you that? Let's read it again. Verse number six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Worldwide, everybody's starting to realize something's wrong. Right? That right there, what I just read, war, inflation, all these things, disease, weather, everything's coming into play now across the world. And even the news articles are reporting it. What they should have done is just said, you know what, we've been wrong. Why don't you just turn to Matthew 24 and why don't you read verses 7, 8, 9. Why don't you just read that? Because that's going to tell you exactly what's coming. That's going to explain to you that things are falling apart. And that God's going to have to judge this earth again. But you know what? He judged it already once, but people just, they didn't want to hear what Noah had to say, did they? No. Why? Because they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and consumed them all. Right? Luke chapter 17. We were reading it the last two weeks on Sunday school. Right? So here's the thing. Everybody's just continuing. And people will read these articles and say, okay, so I better pull my money out of the market and put it in a stable fund because I'm going to be here forever. Right? I know there's war. I know there's rumors of war. I know there's disease. And look, it doesn't really matter what you think about COVID because that's just a ruse. It matters because there's disease everywhere now. Tuberculosis is back on the rise, right? Is everybody going to run out and get a new TB shot? Chicken pox. How many new chicken pox is back with a vengeance? 
Oh, no, but I mean, I didn't even get to that yet. But chicken pox, chicken pox is back. The actual chicken pox, the one you got when you were a kid, if you were lucky, because when you get it when you're older, it's called shingles and you're very unlucky. And then like everybody's saying monkey pox, right? I mean, here's the thing. There's always going to be something. I mean, you know, they'll talk about all these things, but they'll let the bars, nightclubs, and all that stay open, and all the strip clubs and the whorehouses and all this stuff, while STDs, there are 21 incurable STDs now in the world. Nobody's talking about those because that just has to do with your sin. Let's just talk about the one that's going to get the average Joe. Look, let me tell you something right now. Everything's going to get you if you don't trust Christ. You are susceptible to every one of those, period. Right? But when you have all these diseases running rampant around the world and increasing, you have to go, wait a minute, the Bible said this. We don't need to be troubled. We know it. This should strengthen our faith, not tear us down. We should be stronger today knowing the Bible's true. Well, we knew it was true, but now it's coming true. Right? And we should be able to say, I see it. But yet everybody's going, no, I don't see it. Everything's going to continue since. It w- Let's just go to 2 Peter. That kind of comes to mind right now. 2 Peter chapter uh, number 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. <sighs> Verse number one, Second Peter three one, the Bible reads this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. You know, I hate to say it, I don't really feel like my mind's as pure as it used to be. All the wickedness that's going on in the world today, right? Everything we're hearing, everything that's going on. You know, in in chapter two it says, and just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul, right? And Lot wasn't even a good guy, but he was vexed by being in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And I feel the same thing. Even though uh, Peter's saying, stir up your pure minds. I feel like your mind's less pure today than it was ever pure, right? And you know what? It's not our fault that we're being bombarded with this demonic attack of things that don't make sense, wickedness and impurity, right? You're just here trying to be a light in a dark place, and yet you're bombarded with all this impurity. And you're trying, hey, he's saying, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Remember what Jesus did for you. How he endured such contradiction of sinners in himself. And he went to the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. He just went ahead anyway, even though there were people ridiculing him and mocking him and telling him, hey, you're no good. If you're God, why don't you just come down off that cross? Right? But we need to stir up our pure minds by way of remembering what Jesus did for us. And when all this wickedness is bombarding us, we just need to say, glory be to God. Sing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Right? Go back, be converted, be as a child. That doesn't mean act like a kid and do childish things. Right? But it means... Have that faith that Jesus is going to see you through. Sing songs like Jesus loves me. Jesus loves the little children. This little light of mine. I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Do you? It's hard to have joy now, isn't it? It's difficult. But do you? Because you need to have your mind stirred up and remember. It's, hey, Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let him deceive you. Don't let him take your joy. Don't let them sneak up on you. Look, wars, rumors of wars, all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation. Right? Kingdom against kingdom. That's going to happen. God said it. So it's going to happen. Does that mean we need to live in fear? No, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
Don't get carried away with all this deception. Take heed that no man deceive you. Have a sound mind in all this, for crying out loud. Realize what the Bible says. What's the Bible say? The Bible says, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, verse number two, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets. Listen, the Bible needs to be stirred up in your heart. Those are the holy prophets. Those are the ones that told you what God said, right? Same book, it says, knowing this also, that holy men of God or the uh, Bibles of no private interpretation. Holy men of God spake while they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hey, stir up your minds by listening to Jesus. Stir up your minds by the holy prophets and the word of God. This is what we need to be anchored on, the Bible. Period. This is your anchor. And of the commandment of us by the apostles and uh, of the Lord and Savior, because get this, just like they uh, ridiculed Jesus, guess what? Verse number three, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffer walking after their own lusts, their own desires, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. What are they saying? He ain't coming. You believe the fairy tale. Jesus says the opposite. Take heed that no man deceives you. See, they wanted Jesus to be the king of Israel right then. Hey, guess what? He's the king of the universe always. That never changed. What they didn't realize is they didn't listen to the inspiration of the holy prophets. They had no remembrance because they never trusted Christ as their savior. And that's how the world is today. It wants nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And therefore they scoff at your belief. That he's come. Oh, you, you believe Jesus is coming? Well, I'm going to vote for this guy. He's going to fix the world's problems. Or here, let's put it back in the hands of the governments. Hey, governments don't like you. They just want to control you. And as long as the little sheeple pay attention and do what they're told and they play well together, then nothing bad's going to happen. Right? Why don't, you, why don't you go to Sri Lanka and ask how it is over there as people are starving to death. And when they want to go protest in front of their government, the president of that country says, just shoot them on sight. Shoot them on sight. Why? Because we outnumber them. They know it. Right? And they don't, they, hey, look, as long as we're in the pen, as long as we're playing well together, as long as we've believed the lie, as long as the majority of us don't believe the Lord's coming, as long as they just scoff and say, he's not coming, and then the Christians start saying, you know, yeah, this is just another bump in the road of history. The Lord's not coming, even though even the news tells you, look, you got all these biblical signs coming, you got all these things taking place worldwide, and you read Matthew 24, you read Mark 13 and Luke 21 and Luke 17 in the book of Revelation, you say, now you're right. Uh, it's going to go like this forever. So what does that mean when you're just sitting here saying, look, I, I'm not going to listen to what God said. This is what it means. Look at verse number five. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that the word of God, or, or by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. What does that mean? They are willingly ignorant. And Paul is, or Peter is telling you, don't be ignorant. Don't be deceived. Don't go after it. Don't listen to it. There's always some scoffer. There's always some doctor. There's always some scientist. There's always someone that you think is smarter than you. Look, there's a lot of people smarter than me, just about everybody. But there's nobody smarter than God. And if I lock on to this book, then I have the wisdom. And this wisdom crieth in the streets. This wisdom's crying out loud for all of humanity right now. Just read the book of Proverbs. This is the wisdom. I don't have wisdom. This is the wisdom. I just go here. Brother Aaron, you think you have the answers? No, God does. God has the answers. I don't have the answers. You think you know everything. You think you know that? No, no, God does. I'm just showing you what God said. Well, that's your interpretation. No, the Bible's of no private interpretation. It's not my interpretation. I'm just going to compare scripture with scripture, and I'm not going to break the English language, and I'm not going to go out of context. So if you do that, it's pretty easy. I mean, so easy, even an eighth grader can understand it because it's on an eighth grade reading level. Right? But we've been so deceived, and we're willingly ignorant. What are, and what are we ignorant of? the creation. God did it. Listen, let me tell you something. 
Somebody comes and says there's gap years, leap years, and all kinds of other years in between Genesis uh, when God created the heavens and he created this and that, and it's not six days. Hey, run from that person. He's a bold-faced liar. Oh, no, God did it in millions of years. No, he didn't. It's going to be just like when you're in heaven and God's going to make the new heaven and new earth, right? And you're going to watch it take place. How long do you think that's going to last? You're like going to watch it for like a billion years? No. Well, then where did the dinosaurs go? And Well, why don't you just read the book of Job? You'll find out where the dinosaurs went. Why don't you, you know, it, I, Ken, uh, yeah, uh, Ken, Ken, Ken Hoven, and there was another one, uh, creation guy, uh, uh, Ken Ham. So these guys are like, you know, they always said these things that make real good common sense. They're like, hey, what would you do if you had a big group of people to feed? Do you think you'd be chasing the quick bison, or do you think you'd go after a brontosaurus? They're slow. You got the numbers. Take them down. You got enough food for a year, right? Why do you think dinosaurs went extinct? But then all these movies are coming out like Jurassic World, where all these dinosaurs are eating up all these people, and everybody's got to get their guns. And the, the, the. Hello? How do you even know what they looked like? Oh, no, they're, they got all these scales and teeth this big. And Do you realize that most of the bones of the dinosaurs, they add to them anyway to make them fit what they want them to fit? And they'll tell you that. Right? How do you know they didn't have feathers? How do you know what kind of skin they had? You can tell that by the bones? No. Were you there? No. I'm just going to read the Bible, and I'm just going to trust what God says. And God said people are there when these animals, these beasts were there. And I believe men made them extinct just like we're killing off everything else today. What haven't we killed? What haven't we destroyed? Oh, you probably believe in Bigfoot. No, I don't. I don't I'm not a big, big, I'm not a Bigfoot. I'm not a big Bigfoot fan. I find the, that kind of stuff mildly amusing. And I guess in Florida he's called a skunk ape. Like, who wants to catch that anyway? Does that sound like fun? Like, okay, here, why don't we catch skunks and skunk apes? That's what men do. Oh, my. There goes that. But <clears throat> God favors the prepared, right? Um, Verse number six, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. What's that mean? God judged the earth by water the next time it's by fire. Why do you think, why do you think the earth is heating up? I mean, these scientists, they're willingly ignorant. Do you realize when, and I might go there, because it does kind of, uh, well, I hope we have enough time. But in Job, it talks about the fountains of the deep and all this different stuff breaking forth. So at the flood, guess what happened? Fountains of the deep broke open, right? And as the plates and the weight of the earth, because there was a firmament under the earth, the Bible says, and there was a firmament above the earth, and so therefore God caused it to rain and then the fountains of the deep broke open. And as those fountains broke open, guess what happened? The weight of the earth pushed on, those, on that water. And what happens when, when, let's just say you cut a small hole in a balloon and you push on it. What happens? The water shoots out real fast, right? It's not leaking out. So the more pressure, the more weight you put on it, guess what happens? The bigger your stream of water, right? It's like that's where they came up with the idea for water guns, right? You, got the, you pull the little trigger and there's pressure. But then people got smart and they said, watch this. I'm going to make a real big water gun and it's going to have the handle down here. And I press it and pull it and it shoots out this huge stream, right? It's the same thing. So as the fountains of the deep broke open and the weight of the earth smushed down, guess what happened? The stream shot up. So I, I'm not a scientist and I'm really... But let me ask you a question. If water shoots up into the sky really, really quick, really, really fast, all the, and it hits the atmosphere, because we know as the temperature drops, when water hits the atmosphere, what's it turn into? Ice and rain, right? I haven't seen ice and rain in a long time, though. 
or rain I have, I'm sorry, ice and snow. But could you imagine as this water comes back into the atmosphere, it starts to cover certain areas in the north and even in the south, right? And so all this water turns into ice and snow and all this stuff, and it covers a great part of the earth. And then you wonder how American Indians even got here. How'd they get here? Land bridges because everything was frozen? Maybe that's one way, right? Well, here's science. Ready? Because you're cutting your grass with a lawnmower, and you got that gas-powered weed eater, and you got a gas-powered blower, and you're driving an automobile that's not electric, that doesn't have a lithium battery, where are we gonna put those? We don't know yet, but this is how we're solving the problem because of global climate change. Hello, God's been changing the climate since the flood because he knows there's coming a time in which he must judge the earth, right? Because he said, the first time I judged it by water, the next time I'll judge it by fire. Of course, it's getting hotter. Of course, the climate's changed. I've worked outside my entire life. You think I don't know it's getting hotter? Of course it is. Do you realize now in Florida we have something called heat season? Well, daggone it, I thought the whole entire year was heat season. Heat season. There's more than 40-some days that have reached, 40 extra days since 1985 that are reaching 90-degree-plus temperatures. Do you realize in the next five years they're saying there could be 80 more than already before? No, that's the, the global warming is a democratic scare tactic. No, they're willingly ignorant. They don't know what's causing it. I do. It's called Jesus Christ. You ever see those hourglasses, the ones with sand? Remember, you used to people decorate, and you flip it upside down, and the sand goes, and the closer it gets to the bottom, the faster the sand goes. As everything is heating up, and the ice caps are getting smaller, they disappear faster because the hourglass is running out of sand because they're ignorant. And you need to stir up your pure minds and not be deceived by everything out there. You need to have a biblical approach to this stuff. You need to realize that God said this was going to happen. You either believe the Bible or you do not. Who do you believe? Look, do I believe eh, we got to put face masks on cows because of their belching? No! We should eat them. Right? Absolutely. Okay, because God created those things for us to eat. But we don't need to be fearful. We don't need to be afraid. The book's coming true. We should be excited and say, yes, it is. Right? This earth is not my home. I'm just passing through. Look, I'm going to get a new, a new body in the new heaven and new earth. And it's funny. I'm just going to say this. Miss Barb gave me a letter from the Jehovah's Witness. And I look at these things, and there was a Watchtower and Track Society thing. Who, how many of you have seen those? How many of them get them and get them through the mail now, all this stuff? I, I guess I just have a weird way of looking at things. So I'm looking at it, and, and I always see their interpretation of what the new earth looks like, right? And it's always a bunch of people having a good time and all these normal clothes. And everything just looks so kosher, right? Everything looks so good. But, but, but the only problem as I'm looking at this is, well, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus in that? Oh, that's right. You don't believe in him the way we do. See, it ain't going to be a new heaven or a new earth or any good time at all without him. He should be the forefront of that pamphlet, not where is he? It's like finding Waldo. You never find Jesus the right way on a Jehovah's Witness Watchtower and Track Society. It's like, find the hidden message. Find Waldo. You can't because they don't have them in there the way the Bible does. Is it time? It's always time. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for everything you've given us. Lord, I just thank you for the Bible. It should be our compass, our light for our feet, the, where we walk. Lord, and I just ask that you would be with us, strengthen us in these times. In Jesus' name, amen.
Oh boy. 